Good afternoon. We are here in City Hall on November 19th, 2013 at 6 p.m. on 116th West Bridge Street, Ranbury, Texas. Now called this council to order. I'd like to start out with our invocation with our, our own Casey Oliver from Stonewater <laughs> Church, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by the Texas Pledge. All rise. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council Members. If you wouldn't mind, bow your heads with me. Father God in heaven, we love you, and we just thank you for this opportunity uh, just to come in your presence. And God, we pray that uh, you just pour your wisdom out on these men this morning, uh, this evening, excuse me, God, and that, um, God, that you just face, place a special hedge of protection around this place tonight. And God, we pray that everything that we think and that we say and that we do honors you. And because of your son, we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic from which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now the Texas flag. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. <laughs> At this time, I'd like to call upon uh, Judge Ben. I hope that's not me. Try that again. Call upon Judge Ben Macon. He will now in administer the oath of office to Councilman Tony Allen for his reelected council person, place two. Council person Allen, you want to go front and center. back with us, Town Councilman Allen. Can I, can I say thank you real quick? Yes, you may. you got two minutes. Tell everybody all about you. Two minutes. This is the first meeting of the month. Open mic. No, I, I do. Is that too loud? That's right. Is that better? I do want to thank everybody that did vote for me and the ones that didn't, please come to me anytime you see I made a mistake. I'll do my best to correct it. I promise you, you stay on any board for three years, you're going to make mistakes. But I try to learn from them. I do love the city, I love the county, I love the people here. And I appreciate everyone that supported me. And Let's make Granbury a greater place. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, yes, sir. I will allow that. Go ahead, Jess. Thank you. We will now move into the consent agenda, which is the approval of the council minutes of the regular meeting of November 5th, 2013. Council, you had the opportunity to read through those minutes. I will note that uh, reading through the minutes, the following further comments, uh, the, council, the uh, comment by Councilman Parson was recording was inaudible, and I want to ask uh, Councilman Parson if you would like to restate that for the record or strike it. Well. I can't find it in my book right now. 
It was highlighted, I believe. What what paragraph was that in the uh, miracle? Thing? My computer's not up. So I, has anybody got there with him? Could I ask that we defer it till the next meeting? It's nobody seems to have an item. Yeah, it is right here. Yes, item 13177. point in time I suggested that the two parties involved, this court were present, preserve Granberry and the Mesquite Pit of people get together and discuss what they might do with that building. Did, did you get that? Yeah, the two parties If there was some way to preserve that building and maybe move it to Hewlett, uh, to Park. Lambert Park. I don't think you, man, it would be a council's decision. It would be there. Yeah. Didn't yeah. 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 Okay. And, and council, I might, I might state, that's why it's real important that we make sure that we got good audio, that we uh, that Dee can record this stuff so that uh, when she plays it back, she can get all the information that she needs. So we have uh, the comment from uh, Mr. Parson. Is there any more discussion on the uh, minutes of the uh, uh, regular meeting of November 5th, 2013 from the council? If not, I'll make a motion to approve the min minutes of November 5th, 2013. I have a motion by Councilman Couch. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second by Councilman Allen. Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Those minutes are approved. Next, we'll move into the deliberation agenda. The first item being to consider and adopt a resolution order providing for a runoff election for the city of Granbury to be held on December the 10th, 2013, providing for the location of polling places, dates and times for early voting, and appointment of election judge and alternate judge for the said election. Councilor, is there any comments on this uh, deliberation agenda item? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve the resolution order provided for the runoff election for the city of Granbury to be held on December the 10th. Do I have a motion? It's the only polling place the... Um, yes, sir. Yeah. As far as I'm... Yes. Okay. So moved. We have a motion by Councilman Parson. I have a second by Councilman... Couch? Couch. I'm sorry. Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. That resolution is passed. Our next item is to consider and approve a request of Tom Green to close sections of Bridge Street, Crockett, and Pearl Streets on Monday, May 26, 2014. I'm sorry, December 10th. May. May 26, 2014 from 10 a.m. through 11 a.m. to facilitate the Memorial Day Parade. Council, do we have any discussion on that? I do have one question for Tom on that, Mayor Procamp. Okay, Tom, you want to come up to the podium there and address any questions we might have for you, please? Uh, State your name and address there. Uh, Tom Green, 3012 Thorpe Street. Uh, I had created a committee um, back in, I guess, June and to do the Memorial Day, build a flag and a whole event. And I would like for Bob to speak, if you wouldn't mind. Thank you, Tom. Good evening. I am Bob Pennell. I live at 500 Counts Alley. And I am here representing the new committee for the 2014 Field of Flags and for the Memorial Day Parade. I'm also a new member for the Veterans Museum. Members of the committee are Deborah Snyder with the Hood County News, Greg Snyder, Matt Jackson with the City of Granbury, myself, Julia Pinnell, Ambassador and City Volunteer, Cordell Hall and Tom Green, who are founding members of the museum board. We also have other board members and supporters of the museum in attendance tonight. We're here tonight to keep the council aware of our new plans for the biggest and best field of flags to start Friday, May the 23rd, and to end in the PM of Memorial Day, May the 26th of 2014. And to inform the council of our intent to start the parade at 10 a.m. on Memorial Day. 
It is the goal of this committee to honor our armed service members past and present with the field of flags and to honor our fallen on Memorial Day. This year we have approval to have the field of flags on the open flat field behind the Church of Christ. This is an area close to the downtown center and very visual to a main busy highway. We have previously turned in an application, call it Plan A, that would take our parade, as in the past, from the school administration building around the square and back. Plan B has been approved 100% by our board, and we ask by our committee, I'm sorry, and we ask for approval for it to go from Hewlett Park parking area and the beach parking area down Pearl Street, ending at the Field of Flags. This would be about the same traveling distance overall, but would leave the streets around the square clear and open should the merchants choose to use the streets for other purposes as they have in the past. <coughs> and if Plan B is not approved, we then request that we be able to go with Plan A. <coughs> we are requesting this approval early as the community has great plans to really have a fantastic field of flags and Memorial Day parade. To do this, we need early approval. Together with all the planned advertisement and accurate information given out by the committee and the city planners, this year will be the best and a real tribute to our current and fallen heroes. We are seeking that the city also be on board to promote <coughs> this event. With early approval, we can also confirm out-of-town participants in the parade and set up times for news media to come for the filming. They love the field of flags and parades. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Counselor, are there any questions? So go ahead and stay up for a little bit, guys. Is there any questions for Tom or Bob? I've, I've got one. Councilman Parson has a question. <coughs> go ahead, Councilman. Thank you. Uh, Alan, I'm sorry. That's all right. Thank you. Uh, Tom, first of all, I want to say thank you for getting this early. Uh, not the last day. <laughs> but, but I do have a question for you. Go ahead. If y'all starting at the beach, which is, I see what you're wanting to do is wind up there. Now, where does everybody park their vehicles at when they get through the parade? Where do people pick them up at? At the school? At the administration, I mean the school and the church across the parking lot around front. Mm -hmm. The field of flags will actually be on the corner of 377 and Pirate Drive, right there on, you see where all those vehicles always park? At the red light. Mm -hmm. We get access to use that, so it'll be a beautiful view, but yet we're so close to downtown, it's just a win-win situation. Yeah. We're not way out on 377. No, I, I agree, but, but. Are you start down start? there at Hewlett Park and the beach and end at the church. You're going to start at the park, yeah. No. Okay, yes. my concern was if the conference <coughs> center had something going on and they needed parking, so that's. I think that's great, and it's letting the merchants stay open during the parade. Mm -hmm. so, I have no problem. Thank you. Council, any questions for the uh, Tom or Bob or Julia? Thank you, folks. <clears throat> At this time, I'll uh, entertain a motion to approve the request of Tom Crean for the closing sections of Bridge Street, Cochran, and Pearl Street on Monday, May 26, 2014, from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. to facilitate the Memorial Day Parade. Do I have a motion? So moved. We got a motion by Councilman Allen. I'll second it. Uh, we don't make that approval. Plan B. You're right. Excuse me, Mayor. Well, as now as I read, Plan B would be our very preference to start from the park, go to the field of flags. If this is okay, that's what we would really like to have. I'll, I'll change my motion there, Mayor Pro Tem. Well, yeah, I understand that, but we're. Okay, I guess we could go ahead and that. All right, I'll entertain a motion then once again to approve the request of Tom Cream for the closing sections of Bridge, Crock, and Pearl with the plan B that has been introduced to the council. So moved. I have a motion by Councilman Allen. Once again. I have a second. Second. I have a second by Councilman Parsons. Any more discussion, council? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. 
That request is approved. The next one is to consider and authorize the staff to move forward with the construction of the fishing pier and the boardwalk off of East Pearl Street near the Hewlett Park. As you know, it, uh, in a prior council meeting, we have uh, went ahead and we approved the, uh, well, we went ahead and did the, um, the lawsuit and got all that approved, and now we're sitting there with some poles in the ground. And I'm going to call upon Aaron McLean here to talk a little bit about a proposal or some uh, work that him and, and Keith have put together to, uh, to kind of show us what we could do with the existing conditions. Aaron? Mayor, Councilman. Um, Go ahead and introduce yourself there to the... Uh, I'm, pardon me? Introduce yourself with your uh, name and address for... Uh, uh, the Aaron McLean, uh, Parks and Recreation Director, um, 1011 West Bridge Street. Thank you. Um, I was asked to get some prices together, um, see what materials would cost for city staff to complete portions of this uh, boardwalk and fishing pier. As, as you all stated, we have uh, poles sticking out of the, out of the ground now. Um, I've got it broken down into phases. I believe y'all have got a handout with the color, colored phases on it, blue and orange and, and green. Um, easier if we, if we go by that. The phase one, or option one, is the, the blue area, and that would consist uh, strictly of a, a boardwalk, and then at the end, uh, the fishing pier that protrudes out into the lake further. Um, and uh, I'd like to add also that all the materials that are priced do meet the specifications on the engineered plans that we received back in 09. So uh, that, that was the major holdup of this project was uh, attempt to use inferior product. Um, so you, you can see I've got it broken, broken down into a materials list, concrete work. So you've got uh, galvanized hand railing, which would be uh, constructed off-site and shipped to us. We've got a decking from a local Home Depot priced, and then we've got uh, hardware um, fasteners, and then the, the galvanized steel cost. So if you combine all these costs just to do phase one, um, you're looking at 119,344.19. That's city staff doing the work to do the blue section. Um, if we wanted to continue and do uh, the, or the orange section, and the, the, the purpose to do the orange section would be able to incorporate the boat docks. I'd like to point out that on the, uh, the blue section, it's just strictly a boardwalk and a fishing area. Uh, there would be no boat tie-ups. You, you really, in my opinion, wouldn't want, and it wasn't designed initially to have um, a fishing area that close to, to a boat dock. If we continued in the orange section, did phase two, the uh, thinner area of, of phase two would be a boat tie-up. You wouldn't have the original boat slips. You would have a boat tie-up. And if we did decide to go with this phase two and do a boat, boat tie-up, um, there would still be some additional cost. Staff would recommend that we get uh, engineering costs to have this boat area um, made into floating. Otherwise, you're not going to have it usable. As you can tell, they're eight foot out of the water now, and you couldn't, you couldn't tie a boat up to them because it would be eight foot above water level. So if you have just this portion re-engineered um, where we could make it floating, you would be able to use the boat tie up even now because it, that section is still out in the water. Um, the green, two green areas are uh, concrete steps. The original plan showed uh, the concrete step at the far end, so it would be a loop. You would enter at the uh, south end of the blue, phase one, and then you would be able to exit through the, via the stairs, concrete stairs. Um, so if, the, if we wanted to do phase two as well, it would be an additional $62,350. So a grand total of phase one and two together, uh, around 191,694 with city staff doing the labor. Uh, I'd just like to add to that. Um, as a recommendation from the staff, uh, I would rather that we only do phase one currently 
We now have $250,000 left in the bond, which was part of the same bond that was uh, the approval of the Opera House. We have received $75,000 from the settlement of the lawsuit. That totals $325,000. If we spend the 119 right now, that basically would get us down to around $200,000. I would recommend we apply the $200,000 to the construction of the Opera House at this time. It'd be more, because we can use the money from that bond in that way. Later on, we couldn't, we'd have to come up with bonds out of the general fund if we, or payment out of the general fund if we didn't. It's a way to use bond money, which is a better alternative for the Opera House. Aaron, you have any more there? Uh, no, sir. Y'all have any? Council, you have any questions for Aaron? I've got one. Uh, Councilman Parkle? Uh, Parkle? Is there going to be any salvage on the other? <coughs> There is. If, if we end up not using that pipe, we're going to, what's, what's on ground where we can get to, we can cut that off ourselves and either use it in future projects or try to sell it city auction. But the, the ones that are, are out in the water, if we decide not ever to develop that section, we would have to have those pulled up. Hmm. Yeah, this plan assumes the pipes on the side where the hotel is would be cut off and not, there would be no boat dock over there. Would you have to cut them off or would you pull them up with the bar? You could, ha you could have them pulled up okay. at, at, a, at a cost. We can, we can cut the ones that on land off ourselves, or we could pay to have someone come in and pull them with us. It probably cost more over, get them pulled up and they'd be worth Right. You know? Pardon me? It would probably cost more to get them pulled up than what they'd be worth. Yeah. Right. Hard. I had thought about that, trying to work something out where they could, uh, keep the pipe, you know, to remove them, but I, I don't know if we're going to come out ahead that way or not, you know, or even break even. I haven't, I haven't honestly got a price on what it would cost to pull them up, because I don't know how many we're looking at yet. Mayor, I've got about three questions. Okay, Councilman Allen. On the green steps, is that included in phase one? Uh, if, if we, uh, yes, if, if we just do phase one, the concrete work, Concrete cost is around 9000 because we would have to do the green steps and then a short span of sidewalk to connect to the existing sidewalk. And that is part of phase one? Yes, okay. yes, it's in, it's in both options. All right, and I'm looking at phase two on a boat tie-up. It looks like it's only two slips there. Is it two or four? It would be, and it really wouldn't be a slip. It mm -hmm. would just be, we wouldn't be doing the pieces that are sticking out into the lake. We would, we, our option, our idea was just to do the piece that runs parallel to the shoreline and have boats pull up next to that and tie off. Just tie off. Instead of doing a slip. So would you have how many boats could tie up the way it is now? You could only get about four. Three okay. on the front and one on, on, on one back side. All righty. My last question is, is we took about a $200,000 hickey on the last deal and which I wasn't on council and I'm not blaming nobody for it. It was just a deal that was bad uh, that we couldn't control. And, uh, but I noticed the only thing we're buying out of, away from Granbury, Texas, which is good, is from Illinois. Yes, sir. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. I tried to get prices on, on local, sure. local, from local vendors and everything. And they're going to be making what for us? They would be doing the handrails. And it's the same handrails we had on the original one? Yes, it's the same handrails that are on the on the beach. So area. we didn't have to pay freezing nickels anything to engineer anything for this. No, no. Matter of fact, the plans didn't even have any handrails engineered. I took pictures of the ones at the beach, and uh, located these people out of Illinois, and sent them photos and measurements I made myself of the existing ones at the beach, and they came up with that cost to to uh, copy that. What is your time time limit? I didn't even get into that with them honestly. I really didn't. And, and some of these quotes are older than 30 days. It's been longer than 30 days since I was asked to gather these. So some of these may have changed. They're only guaranteed for, for 30 days. With this being the material it is, it's going to rise and, and fall a little bit. And how long would it take you to get everything in for our employees to do it? Um, it, would, it, would, it could take up to three weeks to, to order everything and get it, start receiving it. And if the city staff does this, this would be something 
we would have to do in the winter months um, as soon as the holidays are over because it, I don't have, Parks Department doesn't have extra staff to do, do this when we have athletics going on and the grass is growing. So, so we, we, we could get done with it by April, probably or May, easy. Yes, if we could stay on it. Yep. I, don't, I don't have a problem with what Wayne's asking for, but here's one thing I'd like to see us do you know, in a form of a motion whenever you get ready. But the only one that we're doing business with out, of, out away from Granbury is the company from Illinois. Stuart, I, I want us to put something in there with deadlines, $1,000 day penalties, something that we don't spend another 200000 on him or 100000 in court costs and wind up losing it and cost taxpayers more money. Are you, I don't understand. Are you saying you want to charge the staff $1,000 a day no, sir. if they don't get it done? No, sir. That'd be great. <laughs> no, I, I, don't, I don't understand. Okay, let me repeat this. Not the staff, okay? She's doing it. I said the only thing we're ordering out away from Granbury is the handrails, and they're coming from, uh, I think it was, though. No, no. Yeah, Liberty, Liberville, whatever it is, Illinois. I said with them, I'd like to see us put a, in our contract with them that if they say they can deliver it in 60 days, every day after 60, it costs them $1,000. None of this stuff, I'm sure they're not going to have to have a bond, but we found out bonds are no good anyway. But uh, we need to put some teeth in these contracts that protects our taxpayers. Not our employees, our taxpayers. You can do that as long as everything you buy is less than fifty thousand dollars. Otherwise, you got to bid it out. So it's less than fifty, I believe. I think each component is less than fifty grand, and that's okay. But if, it, if there's any one component, steel, pipe, whatever, it costs more than fifty grand, you got to bid it out, and you can't guarantee that all your bidders are for grand. So just remember that. Okay, but but I'm talking about this particular bid here. Yeah, and these mm -hmm. I want to add also. Um, we have not gone out to. We have not gone out and got competitive quotes on all this material. I was asked to get some uh, prices together as to about what it would cost us to, to do this. So we have, I have not turned it over to our purchasing department to make sure that um, our local Home Depot is the cheaper price and, and that Henson's is the cheapest price, which anything over 5000 I believe, is, we are required to receive three bids to make sure we're getting the best price unless there's another reason we need to stay local so but it may even be cheaper than this yes it could it's, it's very possible the only thing i'm saying is and we just took a two hundred thousand dollar bath yes sir I, I over a hundred thousand in lawyer fees i don't want to see that happen again I, myself i'm speaking for my I, I own agree. one vote but uh, I, I would submit that uh, that loss had nothing to do with the city and 100 percent of the contractor on that job absolutely I we agree. had our we had a uh, proper drawings and proper planning of that project and the uh, contractor failed to live up to their side of that. Uh, when that happens, I'm sorry, it's going to cost you more. Well, it does, but we had a, a million dollar bond that we never collected on either. And, which that's not y'all's fault, Mickey, and I, that's what I said to start with. But when you offer somebody a contract like we did on the Opera House, and it takes forever and I was here. And it's my fault. I'll take blame for it. I did ask for that several times. Let's put some teeth in the contract before we get money. Rick Pratt didn't want it. The mayor didn't want it. So it didn't get in there. But it was never brought back to the council. And I'm just saying, I think if we do business, I don't care what it is, we need to have some teeth in it to protect us. Well, we had penalties in this contract, and part of that settlement was those penalties, wasn't it? Not really. Because we settled for 75, and I think we'd already paid them 200 something thousand. Plus a hundred thousand for an outside lawyer. That worked with the work they had done. Right? Okay, okay, That's council. Listen, we're true. getting a little bit off. This. So collecting on collecting on bonds, the council. insurance company writes those bonds, and they pretty much know what they're writing, and just collecting on that is far fetched. I understand. Okay, I don't understand council, 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 council. Let's, uh, let's stay with the <laughs> the topic here. Is to consider and the authorize the staff to move forward. Now, we we've, we've been presented a. Uh, a uh, financial and also a design it's really not uh, finalized yet or not uh, put, put together but we've got two proposals here with two two terms of uh, finances so if we want to make that proposal tonight or if we want to table this and look at 
what we want to do by, by uh, talking to some citizens or some community people. I know there's been some talk about whether, whether or not we want to leave just the boardwalk, we want to put some docks there, and, and these docks they're talking about, it sounds like two platforms, they're on some, uh, some rings that will float up and down on the post right there, and I think it's a pretty good proposal there to uh, at least keep some type of a uh, of dock there, and depending on how big a boats come up there, you can probably line up several small boats, but only three or four big boats. But uh, uh, this is a proposal that Keith and Aaron have put together. So if we want to enter into this proposal, or if we want to take some more time to look at it, we have those options, folks. No. Looks to me like phase. Go two. ahead, Mr. Phase two requires an engineering study. Any any, any guesstimate as to what the engineering study requires? <coughs> Well, good rule of thumb, you know, it can be anywhere from five to $10,000 um, of the job. But phase two is, uh, the total on phase two is, is 62, over $62,000. But that's, that's for all of the orange section. We would only really be re-engineering the floating section, which is about, I'm going to guesstimate, around a third of that. But that you know, floating section is in the 62, right? Yes, it is. So, probably, right, so to firm up that cost, we probably do need to have the engineering study done, right? Yes, sir. You, you, would, you would really should have it engineered instead of city staff just building something without a, a stamped set of plans. In, in Wouldn't opinion. we have to have that for insurance purposes anyway, Wayne? Yeah, probably we have to have something done there. Um, I was thinking phase two didn't have the engineering it all does. that, that it does, it's not in these costs. It has concrete costs and galvanized steel costs equal to 62. Right. It's, it's, yeah, it's not included. I, I got in red here. Estimate does not include engineering costs. Right. Okay, convert. I think I, you were thinking it no, was. No, I said it, it oh, was, wasn't. It's not okay, concrete. good. Okay. What I, I would probably propose then is that we approve the 119, the first phase, with a with $10,000 allotment for the engineering study for the second phase. Go ahead and get that in process so we really firm up the cost of what phase two is going to be on. Okay. And I have no problem with uh, moving that expense or moving 100, the 129,000 that would be then in, uh, against the bond and allowing the remainder of the bond to move towards the uh, opera house. Understanding that that will also take a little pressure off of uh, general fund general cash. Right. 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 Council, any more questions, Brayer? <laughs> Councilman Parson, would you like to make a motion then? Uh, I make a motion to approve uh, phase one. Oh, got to get a longer life on this screen here. <laughs> Approving phase one of uh, $119,344.19 with an additional $10,000 allotment for engineering study for phase two. Also authorizing uh, the city manager to move uh, the remainder of the funds in that bond allocation to uh, the completion of the Opera House. Second. We have a motion by Councilman Parsons. We've got a second by Councilman Allen. Any more discussion, Council? All in favor of that motion, say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. That is approved. We'll move forward with that. Our next item is to discuss the status of the Opera House Redevelopment Project and consider and approve any recommendations from the Opera House Redevelopment Committee. I'm going to first of all call upon our own Gary Couch, then Councilman Couch, to kind of bring us up to date on that, if you don't mind. You've been in and out of that quite a bit there, so let us know where we're at and where we're headed. Well, things seem to be going um, on schedule, and I talked to Rob, uh, the construction manager today. He felt that he'd be trimmed out um, by the end of this week, and that, um, you know, delivering us, I shouldn't, put, shouldn't say that, but he, he planned on us being in there uh, the weekend of Thanksgiving. Um, it looks like that's on schedule. I didn't have that specific conversation with him. Um, but Mayor Pro Tem, do you want me to go into the, the other aspect as far as the uh, the uh, Maybe right. don donor situation? No, we're going to go into that. That's the next number five here. Okay. I was going to have you kind of just update us on that and kind of saving Wayne's voice here right now. Okay. So, and Wayne, if you got anything you want to add to that, feel free to do it. Well, I mean, you know, the, uh, the carpet's in and it's uh, getting ready to be put in or it's in the process of being put in, and uh, chandeliers are hung. Uh, the uh, fly rail system will be in on the 25th of November. It's the last thing you put in. That's the scenery that comes in and out. Uh, you want that in. Um, the seats were put in as of last Friday, 
uh, newly upholstered seats. It's the original seats that we that we took down and uh, removed the you know all the stain that was there, and we re redid the seats and did the upholstery. It's really going to be a beautiful uh, theater. We're really proud of it. The proscenium has now been the rock uh, uh, facade that is on the proscenium is now up, and uh, things are looking good. Like, like you said, I think we're on schedule. Okay, very good. Council, any questions for these two folks? Okay, like I said, that was a discussion item. We'll move on to the next discussion item. Number five was to discuss and consider naming rights opportunities for the historic Granberry Opera House. As you know, uh, in a prior council meeting, we did pass a resolution approving the uh, ability to do this, and that was not only for the Opera House, but for anything else that we have in the city. We wanted to probably bring things like that over $5,000 to the council. So we do have some of those issues in the Opera House, and then once again, I'm going to let uh, Councilman Cow, Gary Cow, talk about the, uh, the naming rights of the Opera House. If you would, please. Well, the... Um the different opportunities range from, from seats at 500 all the way to the uh, performance hall at 500,000. And there was discussion last, our last council meeting about the term of which the naming rights would be good for. And um, I believe that, that in this particular situation that we need to make this a lifetime um, donor recognition. Uh, I know Stuart talked about other other elements in the city like a park bench or, or whatever else someone might want to contribute to. But in, in this case, I think that what would be most uh, efficient is to adopt the different values that are uh, outlined in the brochure um, so that it's, so it's on the record of a lifetime gift and recognition. <coughs> I got one question, uh, uh, so we're talking everything from the seats to the concession stand or whatever. So, um, the, the seats, I think, would be the lifetime of that particular seat. So okay, okay. It's a little different than the other parts of the uh, building, so there, needs to, there would need to be a distinction. Because that was going to be my next statement, you know, whether the seats get removed or what happens with them, you know, if we do something like we did, like we're doing now. So. This okay. Is lifetime of the facility, not lifetime of the of the donor. <coughs> Say that again. This is, this is lifetime of the facility and or its components, and not lifetime of the donor. Right. When the donor <laughs> um, is no longer with us, their names would still be there. <laughs> All right. You know, Council, I, any more? I, I don't have a problem with that, Gary. The only thing is, what happens if ten years, twenty years down the line? Somebody comes in and Granbury's sitting at 150, 200,000 people and they say, you know what, I want to buy one, two, three, four buildings and redo this whole thing and do something different. Well, if, if we put in there, if it's sold, it's over with, or would they come back after the city at some day and say, oh no, my, my grandpa paid $500,000 for that and y'all sold the building. Because we, we probably won't be on the council, I know I won't. Right, well, you know, I think that when you get into the, the larger um, amounts of the donors, I think they're going to have, you know, certain requirements, which will maybe come back for us to take a look at, and then that will be a decision we'll have to make. Um, but as far as it is presented today, it is, you know, the lifetime of the, of the venue, and if that somehow changes in the future, well then, so with, so with that recognition. You, you see what I'm saying, though? You, you don't, we don't want to get ourselves in a trap that if the building's sold 10, 20, 30 years from now and somebody comes up and says, well, they put 500000 in, we want our money back. Yeah, and, and what you're saying is 20 years from now, if we decide to rede redevelop again and tear out the staircase in the concession stand, then we would resell it again at that point. Is that true? I mean, that's the lifetime can, of the can, venue. Can we treat it sim similar to a, uh, when you go buy a lifetime battery? You know, everybody knows that battery's not going to last forever, but it's lifetime as long as that person owns that car, as long as we own that property, as long as that person, you know, it's there, then it's a lifetime. If that property turns or something happens to it, then that is no longer. Yeah, I think that's, 
that's the Similar to it, assumption right. there. Yeah. What happens? We still own the building, though, and uh, say we remodel it. Somebody that's remodels it, saying. like Wayne's talking about, in 30 years. And we go back in and we hang new chandeliers and all that stuff. And the, they understand at that point, if, if that family still wants it, it, they'd have first option at it or something like that, Gary? We certainly can put that in there. I mean, I, I don't blame you and I don't blame them. I think they need it as long as they can get it. But we don't want to tie ourselves down that we'd never be able to sell it if we wanted to. Yeah, I don't, I don't see how this prevents us from doing what we want to do with the building unless there was condition from the donor that came back to us and said, you know, I'm willing to do $300,000. However, I need you to meet these conditions. And then that becomes a decision by the council. I think that... I think those concerns will take care of them themselves um, as, as we move through this process. Because if a donor is not comfortable mm -hmm. with what we are proposing, then they're not going to donate. They're not gonna donate. <laughs> but the way you could do that would be that the lifetime of, uh, of the facility are 30 years. Okay? Right? Whichever is the longest. I'm going I'm to call on our on a council of Stewart here to is there some verbiage that we should use on this to protect this not only from the remodeling or, or zones but to, and also help the the donor feel like they donate a lot I think in my opinion you're thinking right that it's the lifetime of the proponent or the asset and obviously if you remodel rip out a staircase the staircase doesn't well, exist anymore mm -hmm. and so the lifetime of that staircase ends in 30 years and you can certainly include a first right of refusal if you want to in your uh, in your naming right language. But when we did the naming rights policy last week, we wrote it so broadly to, to allow you to have these kind of options to have this healthy discussion. But for the larger ones, you're going to come back with an example of what someone wants to donate, though. And they can make a decision on it, too. Well, that's just what I'm assuming yeah. that, <coughs> that uh, right now I haven't been faced with that that, yeah, we're, we're good. that problem um, but I, I would assume that that we will be faced with that if, if especially if we're putting 300 500 thousand up is it, is it counselor is there any more discussion on this uh, item If you want to make a proposal, Council House, but I would like to enter into that proposal that we also allow the uh, city attorney to write up some verbiage that would uh, uh, fit this fit the need here. Well, could we? Could I make a motion then to sure. um, to adopt the donor level amounts? As it's defined in the brochure, naming opportunities of the na of, as it's defined as naming opportunities, and the term of those recognitions will be the lifetime of its elements. Okay, that's your motion. Yes. No. Okay. All right, Council. I'm not going to repeat that, but. Uh, you heard the motion from Councilman Couch. Do we have a second on it? Second. We got a second by Councilman Parson. Any more discussion, Council? Uh, in, in looking at uh, what we call it, the Cowboy Stadium and their selling of the AT&T rights and all of those, uh, one thing we uh, those those rights are sold with a, with an upfront amount of cash and a certain, uh, a certain term, and whether that may be the life of the asset or just a, 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 an agreed upon life. But then as a part of that, they have a continuing requirement to fund uh, that advertisement for the, for the life of that contract. I'm not proposing that, that that's something we would do here, but by uh, one thing we do need to be thinking of in terms of uh, committing this to the lifetime of the asset is this, this will preclude any further 
fundraising with these assets in the future. One thing I'd like to say about the Stone Memorial Museum, it's a I know you did, Laurel. You told me before, but I wouldn't hear. I would have bought one. Well, what I'm saying is, is the people that bought then, they're not asking for their money back. They want it to go keep on going. How much was it back in, old Laurel? I think it was yeah, 175, 200 dollars. 200 dollars. But but when you're talking about when you're talking about spending 300 or a half a million, they need to be protected. Yeah, that's true. And the uh, the larger donors that have been given so so far, which are fifty thousand dollar donors, I mean, this this wasn't a concern of theirs. No. I think people that give, you know, do it in in that spirit. So. I'd also like to add into the uh, the motion that the city manager be able to accept all monies and to close all the transactions. Council's okay with that. Okay, we have a motion. Do I have a second? We had a second, I think, from... You amend my second. You amend it? What? Read the read motion. Read the motion again, Mr. Council. Uh. <coughs> I'll make a motion to... Do you have that? Name uh, it. Okay. The lifetime of the elements. We'll receive and process all donations. Right. Before we vote, Stuart, <coughs> uh, <coughs> when we say the lifetime of the element, that protects us. Correct. Yeah, in, in in your instance, when if somebody if we sell it and someone comes in and tears it up, and, and uh, if the stairway goes away, then we can rebuild and resell. Okay. It's gone. Okay. Same thing if the chair, if you move out the chair. What happens if we sold it to a theater company, say in New York, and comes in and says, "I want to leave everything like it is," and they go popping names off. Well, no, that has to be part of the cell then. Of the okay, that would protect them. We can protect contract. them. Okay, I have no problem. Okay, Council, we got a we got a motion and second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. All opposed, say nay. Those naming right opportunities to pass for that particular item. I do want to make an announcement to the community there that our December 17th regular meeting will be moved to December the 18th where we can have a council meeting and also canvas the vote. Councilors, there's any, no, any more discussion? If no more discussion, the council meeting is adjourned. <coughs> <coughs>